This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, another ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond. And welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, July the 9th, in the year 2K1, one of the most shocking Wimbledon victories of all time was held. That is Gordon Ivanisevich, and I know I'm going to probably butcher that name a couple of times. He wins the 2001 Wimbledon men's final against Patrick Rafter. Now, you may be thinking, oh, he's a giant Cinderella. But, Ivanisevich actually had been to two Wimbledon finals, three Wimbledon finals, 92, 94, and 98, without winning the title. So, Gorin was... Basically, the hard luck loser of the 1990s in Wimbledon tennis. The 2001 Wimbledon final will be talked about later. But anyhow, Ivanisevic had been to three Wimbledon finals, as I said. And he was a wild card. They decided to give him a wild card because, you know what? He deserved it. So, anyway, the top half of the draw had a major surprise. In section one, in the fourth round, the round of 16, Pete Sampras, the one seat who was cruising a little bit, had to take on Roger Federer. Yes, that Roger Federer, who was the 15th seat at the time in 2001, 21 years ago. And in a five set shocker, Federer sent Sampras out of it. Also in the quarterfinals, Canadian, I mean, local legend Tim Henman, who took down Todd Martin in, in, to get to the quarterfinals. Merritt Savin, the fourth seed, took down under Arnaud Clement to get to the quarterfinals, and Goran Ezevicic. Section four was his group. He first had to face qualifier Frederick Janssen of Sweden, beat him in three sets. Taking, then he took on the number 21 seed, Carlos Moya, and beat him in four sets. And then he would face the young Andy Roddick, who wasn't at the top of his game yet. Gordon won in four sets. In men's tennis, he had to win three out of five sets. All that. And then Gordon would take on, the worst part about Gordon is that he had to take on local favorite and fucking Benedict Arnold. If you're Canadian, you know what I mean. Greg Rusetsky. Brzezinski shot Juan Carlos Ferraro to get to this point. But I, as a proud Canadian, hated that Brzezinski decided to denounce his Canadian citizenship and go to England. Brzezinski could have made Canadian tennis history. Well, Goran kind of took down Brzezinski, and a lot of people were upset. But I wouldn't be. I would be happy because that Benedict Arnold. Um, Thomas Enquist got to the quarterfinals, the 10th seed. Patrick Rafter, the Aussie, who was the three seed, who took down Dan Basic, uh, Sidislav Dosadel, and Hikram Arazi, and Miguel Yushni. So Rafter was proving he was a good guy. Fellow Aussie, Leighton Hewitt, who was the five seed, got shocked in the round of 16 by Nicola Escude. And number two, Andre Agassi took down Kiefer. So quarterfinals happened. Roger Federer took on Tim Henman, and the Brits were hoping for Henman to win. He didn't disappoint. He took down Federer, even though it took a couple of tiebreakers in the set in sets. But Henman did it. He got to the semifinals and took down Federer. But of course, as I said, Federer was not at the height of his power. Yeah. The other quarterfinal in that part of the draw, Marin Safin was expected to take down Izanusevich. But, unfortunately, Safin would only win one of the four sets, and Goran would be going to the semis against Tim Henman. Quite a dilemma. I mean, you have a you have an England legend going up against Goran, who had been to three Wimbledon finals in the 90s, and had to give him as a wild card. On the other side of the quarterfinal draw, Pat Rafter, dead crush Enquist of Sweden in three sets, and Agassi, Lost the first set to Escude, but came back to win three straight. So, Patrick Rafter had a tough time against Agassi. But Rafter won 
6-2 in the fourth, and 8-6 in the fifth. At the time, Wimbledon, you had to win the final set by two by two games. No matter what, no tie breaks. So Patrick Rafter won. So Rafter took um, Agassi and was face ready to face the winner of Tim Henman versus Goran Ezenizovic. The semi was a tough one. Goran won the first set 7-5, lost the seven, second set 7-6 seven, on tie break, and then was bagel 6-0. So it looked like Hedman would be going to the final and giving British tennis fans a great TV rating. And, of course, you know, watching it on NBC. The fourth set happened, and Goran took down Hedman 7-6 in a tie break. Hedman had a chance, but he flubbed it. But in the fifth set, Goran took advantage of Hedman's mistakes and got to the final. It was like, what the heck? But, yeah, he got in. So it was Goran versus Patrick Rafter. The wild card... We got lucky to get in the draw and the number three seed Pat Rafter. Now, what makes this final even more unique was that it didn't happen on a Sunday. Normally, you know, Grand Slam finals play on a Sunday. No big deal. But because of rain issues in the 2001 Wimbledon, and of course, Senator Court and a few other courts didn't have the roof, the retractable roofs. They were in for it. So what ended up happening for, I think, the second time ever is that they had to play the final on a Monday. So the next day, on the Monday, they did it. And what's even more impressive was that the Wimbledon officials allowed fans to come in and fans to be rowdy and all that. Wimbledon has a strict code about fan behavior, but basically, the Wimbledon officials let Australian and Croatian fans come in and make noise and do lots of things and wave flags and all that, which was kind of unusual, but yeah. It had a feel, fear, feel like the U.S. Open. So the final happened. Ivanisevic won the first set 6-3, lost the second set 6-3, won 6-3, and it looked like Goran was going to finally get his Wimbledon title. Unfortunately, though, he lost in the fourth set 6-2. So everyone was like, well, this is not going to be good. And, you know, it's now two sets all. Goran's going to choke. Goran took Andre Agassi to a fifth and deciding set in the 92 final after winning the fourth set, but he lost the fifth set. In 94, he was crushed by Sampras, despite the fact he took Sampras to two tiebreakers. And in 98, he got to the fifth set by winning the fourth set against Sampras, but losing 6-2. So for the third time in four chances, Goran had to go to a fifth set, and it was a tough set. Gordon and Pat both were fighting two for now. And remember what I said about the fifth set, you need to win by two clear games? Well, that's what happened. At 7-7, seven, seven, Goran made a couple key shots. Goran had four match points, but botched it. However, on the fifth, he managed to get Rafter to shoot the ball wide, and Goran Ivanisevic shocked the world by winning Wimbledon. Finally, after three trips to the final and missing out, Twice to the great Pete Sampras. He did it. Goran shocked the world, taking down Patrick Rafter. And man, Croatia went nuts. Goran had the uncanny ability to take off his shirt after each match and then, you know, fling it and all that. His celebrations were big. It was huge. I mean, Goran Ivanovic did something that nobody thought it could do. Get a wild card in Wimbledon, win the Wimbledon final, and become the first person since Boris Becker, who I ironically did a on this day belt, to win unseeded. And Wimbledon went from 16 to 32 seeds that year. So what a moment. Goran Ainsley-Church jumped all the way to number 14 in the ATP from 106. So Goran did his job. And it was amazing to see him finally win. And Wimbledon fans are happy as can be. One of the greatest of all time. I don't think there's been a wild card or an unseeded champion since 2001, to my knowledge. So, all good to him. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.